I absolutely fell in love with Jedi Survivor. This is a Star Wars piece of media that I've been dying for since Fallen Order's release in 2019. Now, I can definitely say this is my favourite piece of Star Wars media since Disney's takeover, and honestly, I loved every second of it. Now, I previously said in my last video, where I played three hours of the game and then reviewed it, that the FPS was an issue. And just before I quickly get into this review, I want to say scratch that, because after a couple more hours, or even after the uh, patch that they ended up releasing, the FPS is not even an issue at all. I didn't notice it once. Um, maybe a couple of frame, frame drops here and there, but literally nothing of note. So, so I finished this game round about 19 hours on stream, and I'm going to do this review in sections and talk about every aspect of the game that I want to highlight. I might miss a few things if I do, let me know in the comments. Now, Jedi Survivor is set five years after the events of Fallen Order, and Carl's character, as I said in my last video, has clearly grown and matured so much in his time. A long to go with that, he seems a lot more grounded in the Force, a lot more stronger and skilled with the Force and his lightsaber, and it feels a lot more free-flowing in this game. This, for me, starts off very strongly in the Coruscant portion of the beginning of the game. It sets a good tone for Carl and his character, and where we've come to. Now, it also brings up the character of Bode who we'll get onto in a while and his relationship with him which is very very good and very strong also very believable now we eventually make his way to Koba which is the home planet well it's not the home planet but it's where Grease is staying and there we talk to Grease and we learn of this underground Jedi almost temple where we go down there we see a uh, a robot named Z who holds a key and knowledge of the High Republic and how to get to a secret planet called Tanalor. Now this planet is supposed to be a safe haven and in Cal's time, which is thousands of years after the High Republic, it is namely going to be used as a safe haven for people running from the Empire. Now the only place to get there is this key, or when we learn later on, is to put the arrays into a certain position to create sort of a triangle thing in which we can go through and get to Tandalor. Now this kind of reminds me of the sequel trilogy in which you have to have the Sith Wayfinder to find Exegol. Which I must admit I really did like that concept even though simple and not really complex at all. I really enjoyed that idea and the, the goose chase that it leads you on. And from this High Republic era, we have a uh, main, sort of main, antagonist of this game, Dagon Gera, which character I absolutely loved when I first stumbled across. Saw him bleed his crystal and put all his anger into it and just switch to the dark side. Obviously, he already had intentions of that, but clearly he hadn't fully, fully committed because his crystal was still, well, a light crystal before this. So I love seeing that switch of him being like, yeah. This is what I've waited for. Boom, into the darkness. I absolutely love that. Now, I really like what the Star Wars Jedi series does with dark side users, such as Dagon Gera and Tyrone Malikos from the last game. Has, they're not a typical Sith. They obviously have Sith attributes and they're using the dark side, but they are different in their own ways and they don't necessarily follow the Sith path. Now, a huge chunk of this game is spent chasing Dagon, finding the key, and getting to Tanalor. That is the end game of this game, is to find in Tanalor, as Cal can use this as a safe haven for people who are trying to hide from the Empire and also, maybe, creating a new Jedi Order. So up to this point, it's very clear how our enemy is Dagon. We are trying to find the key to Tanalor to find a safe haven for those who want to run from the Empire. From here, we go to seek out Seer, who's living on a planet called Jeddah. But before we meet Sia, we actually do meet Edo Cordova. Now, I for some reason thought Edo was dead. Clearly BD wounded as well because he looked absolutely ecstatic to see him. Now I enjoyed the fact that we met him as he was a character not there in flesh in the first game. But he was the driving force behind pretty much the whole game. And I loved exploring his character and get, gaining his wisdom so on and so forth but I did know spoiler alert that he was eventually going to die I could see this straight away he was an easy character to bring into this game and easily kill off for impact so the role he played was minimal 
made sense and for the most part I really enjoyed seeing another Jedi Master in action sharing his knowledge with us. I also thought it looked mega cool and I just wanted an outfit like that as you can see here. Oh, I want a Jedi outfit man. Fuck. Spoiler alert, I actually did get one but it's not like the classic Jedi outfit but I still like the modern take on it. This is where we go see Sia. Now Previous to seeing Sia, we do actually meet Merin, who I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, but for now, Sia is clearly grown with this force humongously since Fallen Order. She's clearly embraced it now because in the last game she sure off. She's almost become like this wise, almost, I don't know, you know what she reminds me of? The blind guy in Rogue One. It is really that vibe like she's not, I don't know, I, even though she's classic with a lightsaber we do actually play as her at one point in the game which i'll get onto as well she just seems to be like a almost sentient being sort of i don't know she gives off this weird wizardy vibe that i don't really get from usual jedi masters but she is absolutely mega cool in this game and upon arriving in her new archive which she's took some of the archives from coruscant and placed them here to contain knowledge we learn that that's what she's been doing this whole time is trying to build more knowledge and keep knowledge from the Jedi ways to build almost a new Jedi order. Now, this room looks fucking cool as. So from here we end up going to another temple in which was kind of a throwaway segment for me apart from the free running bit. By the way, the free running in this game is class. But yeah, we get to this temple, we find one of um, Sia's friends that don't really matter because he ends up dying for their cause to give us some information. We do a fucking mega sequence with Merrin showing us this new trick where we can dodge in the air through a uh, through like the phase wall. Um, but that's a pretty far, throwaway section. Now after some story filler and gameplay sequences we eventually get led to Dagon who's actually at this point kidnapped Z the robot who had the High Republic knowledge and we confront him after chasing him and have a fight with him now this fight is absolutely awesome I love every single lightsaber battle in this game I think this one might be my favorite I'm not even sure why because it doesn't do anything spectacular but it just gives me that proper 1v1 vibe like a Vader versus Luke in episode 6 vibe do you know what I mean? Like a proper 1v1. And I fucking loved every single minute of it. I loved... I, Dagon as well. The way he controls his... When he uh, splits his lightsaber into dual stance. And he controls one with the force. Because he's only got one arm. Just... Oh man, it was so cool. I also absolutely love when I call stuff in the midst of a fight like this here. Hold it. You! As you can hear, my mic when I was streaming did not like it. But <laughs> that stuff hypes me up, man. From here, we actually go and face Ravis after chasing Dagon again. Now, this fight with Ravis... I didn't even mention him today, you know. That's how much of this this character's just flown over my head. Like, you've seen him once in Greasy's bar. He threatens you. You see him a couple of times after that, but he had no real impact on me. Like, he was a brute. He served a good, like, right-hand man purpose, I suppose. And it was cool that he had, like, this... Um, this oath to D Dagon from thousands of years ago, blah blah blah. It was cool, but it, I didn't really care about the character. And in this fight, when we killed him, I was just happy I killed him because he was an absolute brute and it took the piss. Now, it was a good fight, it was a cool death, cool segment, but like I said, Ravis went oh, completely over my head, so I think that says a lot about his character in the game. Merc him. Yes! Go. After this, we go and find Dagon Gare and kill him. Now, I didn't know how I felt about that because it was just like put to the side, which is why I'm not going to show you any images or talk about it much so you know how I felt when playing the game. We come here and catch up with the gang. Grease brings his tea. We catch up with Bode and how he's feeling about his daughter, this and that. And then we eventually get this segment. Now, let's talk about Merrin, right? Carl's and Merrin's relationship is clearly. They clearly like each other slash love each other kind of thing. And I have no problem with that at all. But this is one major flaw. For, well, actually, the sec two 
out of flaws in the whole game. This is one of them, and I'll come up to the next soon. I don't understand where this came from within Carl's character. Let me just show you this little segment. Look, um... <clears throat> the order's gone. It's time to leave it behind. And... I know what I want now. What the fuck? Now I had absolutely no problem with this love story or them two kissing or anything like that. It's what Carl said just before he kissed her that he knows what he wants now. We don't care about the Jedi or the Kyrie and on. He needs to forget about him. Like, where did this come from? I didn't understand this side of Carl's argument. Like, it felt so out of character. And I felt like they did that just to push the love narrative between him and Merrin. I, did, I didn't like it. And I just wish that... I don't, like I said, I don't mind the kiss, but I wish they'd have done it in a different way. I didn't even need to say that sentence. Because after saying that, he's then gone and still found Tano Lawrence and said that he wants to build a new haven for Jedi, blah, blah, blah. It just didn't make sense to me at all, and I didn't like it. After Master Cordova fixed this key, we get a warning sound, which is typical Star Wars warning siren and I loved it that the Empire are here now here is where the biggest twist of the game for me happened I'm really sorry about this oh. son son you don't have to do this no. now I can't tell you how much I did not believe what was happening in front of me <laughs> I actually heartbroken by this as well because I really liked Bode as a character and I thought we were good mates. It was really good story writing, really good storytelling. I did not see it coming at all. But I'm glad it happened for this one reason, this sequence. The coolest moment of my entire life. Can I go over here? Oh, oh my God, this is so cool. I love this. As you can see, I'm mic crackling every time I get excited. I love this section too. It made me feel... Episode 2, Anakin Skywalker, man, I felt so cool, I enjoyed this sequence so much. I actually stumbled upon this bike earlier on in the game and thought, oh, as if I can't ride it, I'm sure I said that. And for this, look at this. Oh, man, it was just such a good sequence, I enjoyed every single bit of this bike chase. And then to blow my mind even more, this happens, which I could also not believe. Get to the Empire! I'm not giving it to the Empire. Killed Master Cordova. Cal, you don't have time for this fight. Something terrible is coming to that archive. Listen to your instincts. You know I'm right. What have you done? If you want to keep your family safe, you get them out of there. Right now. What have you ah! done? You can't be. survived what the fuck is going on <laughs> so it just turns out that board is a sith but not a sith because he's only doing it to save his daughter he was a jedi that survived the purge and now he's working as a spy for the empire but not actually for the empire for himself it was all over the place and i could not believe what was going on there's so many layers to this story and this particular relationship between Kyle and Board proper, proper made me enjoy this game. Now, from this, we eventually fight Board off. He hurts us, and we're knocked unconscious. And we actually play a seer in this segment of the game. Now, contrary to my thoughts on God of War, where I didn't like playing as a trace because this segment was less than 30 minutes long, I really enjoyed it. Playing a seer was very cool. The moves were slightly different. Her the force abilities were slightly different and I, I really enjoyed it. Although for me it did bring the biggest gripe of this game for me. Which was the battle with the man, the myth, the legend. Whoa, whoa, everyone shut the fuck up! Now every time I get Vader in mainstream media Star Wars, I absolutely lose my mind. And... Every single time it has been done in the game, for me, especially now, 
the canon ones and stuff, it's do, it's been doing well. The last game, Fallen Order, did it perfectly. Vader was so overpowered, and I love that about that. But this time, it let us go toe to toe with Vader, and I did not appreciate that at all. As I said here. Yes, just fucking kill me straight away. There's no way I should even be getting a touch of you here. Personally, thought Vader should have just killed us off instantly. From here, it's actually a very, very quick turnaround from aligning the arrays to get to Tanalor, then to eventually fighting board. Now, this fight and ending was everything I wanted it to be. And the stuff with him is so blinded by saving his daughter that he actually puts her in danger. And here, Carl is forced to kill his friend board and take his daughter as his own. And the end sees us taking care of Bod's daughter, making sure she doesn't walk the same path as Bod, and taking Tanel off for his own, and making it a safe haven from those who don't want to be run by the Empire. And I absolutely love this ending. I thought it was very fair. At the beginning of the video, I said we were going to talk about this game in sections. The next two sections I'm literally going to skim over because they're so simplistic. The gameplay was amazing. The stances they added excelled from last time. The the lightsaber combat was so much better, there's new force moves, everything about this game is a step up but similar, so you're not going to feel out of place or out of touch with this game. The dodge system still a bit broke, same as the last game. Now the fast travel system was a system that was hugely welcomed by me because I love being able to get to places quickly if I need to. Um, just overall the gameplay excelled in this game, especially the lightsaber combat and free running. Now the last section I want to briefly talk about is customization. It's a huge step up from Fallen Order and that is what I wanted and nothing more. I didn't feel the need for the customization to be so in depth but it was and it's welcomed. I give myself a bun and a big beard to try and emulate myself and that's all I wanted really. But that's been me. Thank you so much for letting me rant on about this game. I absolutely adored. It's my third favourite game of all time now, overtaking God of War. Which is absolutely mad for me to say. I don't think it's as good as God for War. But this is a favourite thing. It's not like a definitive best game. It's just my favourites. So yeah. Thanks for watching. If you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in a bit.